thank you everyone for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont Show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director of Service Render Incorporated and Art So Wonderful. And before I get started, I want to talk about my co-host here, the Honorable Mayor Christine Lott. You know, I live in Winooski and this, that's my mayor. I love her. She's my friend as well. And, um, you know, she does a lot of work. She's a definitely boots on the ground there. And I want to tell everybody, please come in, in Winooski. Check out everything we have to offer. A lot of fun events. Oh, incredible food. Um, and you will the lake, the river walk. You know, it's incredible. So come to Winooski and see, see what we have to offer. Thank you. Before we get, so now we talk about our wonderful guest here, Scott Finn from, well, we'll get to the new name, B <laughs> BPR and BPS, right? We'll first start, that's how it started. Thank you, Bruce, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. And, and you started with um, BPR, BPS in 2018. Yeah, um, I, and now we're calling ourselves Vermont Public. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. And um, I, I come up through a, a combination of community organizing. I was a community organizer in a place called Big Ugly Creek, West Virginia. It's actually a small, beautiful little place. Um, and then I was a journalist, worked for a newspaper for a long time in West Virginia, and then got into public media and been really happy. My family and I both have been super happy to be here in Vermont. Um, so, yeah, thanks for having me on your show. No doubt about it. So we want to hear about all of those entities because you, I know that you do other things. You're, you're um, CEO and president, right? A, a Vermont Public, yeah. And, you, and some other, some other um, program too, right? In some other country. I mean, some other city. Yeah, no, it's so Vermont Public is is basically what is funny. Um, it's public television and public radio coming together in part because we're trying to make the case that the way media is changing. I don't know if you guys have young people in your lives. My daughter is spending not so much time with TV and radio, but lots of time on these other platforms. And so we're trying to say we're going to be there, too. Um, yeah, so that's 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 why I'm excited to be here and talk about it. What is the impact of the merging of the, the radio and TV arms? Yeah. Does it change your program yet? So our, our goal as mayor is to uh, be able to continue to serve people on radio and TV in exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that people are not seeing any disruption at all to their, their service, but by merging, we're able to have more resources to do things on YouTube and Instagram oh. uh, through podcasting. And so we're talking with groups like um, you know, yeah. CCTV and Town Meeting TV, yeah. which you work with, yeah. uh, community media folks, and trying to figure out there are ways that we could help boost in, uh, youth in, involvement in media. Uh, it's good for us in terms of our future, but it's also good for the state. Um, so that's that's the whole purpose. So I'm hoping you're not, except for the name change, Vermont yeah. Public, I'm hoping you're not really seeing or hearing much, much different on TV and radio, but behind the scenes we're trying to use the resources now that we have to reach out to more people and do a better job, not just young people, but also people who have been historically underrepresented in public media. And so that's the BIPOC community, right. um, it's rural people, it's, it's, whole, it's a whole bunch of different folks. I so. saw there was a goal, um, the, a goal of the organization to have your programming better reflect more parts of the community. Have you seen any change on that front yet? I think we're just getting started. I mean, there are two ways we're trying to do that. One way is by hiring folks who are what are called engagement producers, whose job it is is to go out in the community and tell stories with them instead of for them. And like Myra Flynn, for example, is a recent hire. She's a well-known performer, uh, but she's also a really talented journalist, and she's one of these engagement producers. So we're hoping that by having more people on staff that have more diverse experiences with the goal of telling stories with people, it's, just, it's very similar to actually, and we're aligned with, what groups like community, you know, CCTV are doing and Town Meeting TV. Yeah. Um, and so the other thing that's happening is we're talking a lot with those groups too. How can we help each other? Yeah, so I, I'm hoping that we're doing a better job. We're starting to count the um, racial diversity of our sources to see if we're matching the population at large. And what we're seeing is, is we're starting to, but there's, there's a lot more work to be done. So, um... <clears throat> Um, so you, so you, so that's awesome that you know you, you're working more with BIPOC and people on POC, um, and so you you count it, you're doing the measurements who you're reaching, right? And so um, I know you reach like a million people, right? Something like that. One million. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty incredible over the course of a year on TV and radio. Every month on radio, we're reaching about two hundred thousand people, and then there's another hundred thousand on TV every month. But then when you aggregate it, of course, of course, a year, a lot of people are 
and, and not just in Vermont, but we have a large audience as well in Montreal, um, especially for TV. Uh, there are English speakers there that yeah. consume our programming. One of the things that's happening, though, and one of our problems, is that our audience continues to get older. So, uh, you know, most of our audience is 40 and over, with one exception, which is PBS Kids, which is eight and under. Right. So we have this big missing middle. Yeah, you do. So that's like the 14 to 25 year olds, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, so how are you? What's your? What's your? Um, how are you going to work with those communities? That's, that's my age group. I work for 14, 25 year olds. Well, I need to talk to you then. I mean, yeah. if, you don't mind, if you don't mind, I mean, like, in the with the young people you're working with, how are they consuming media? How are they producing media? Oh, mm -hmm. What's it? What's well, it like? Well, f well, first of all, you know, I have youth advisory boards who's that age group around pretty much around Cheney County. But what they do, they just do this regular, you know, f Facebook, Instagram, and you know, emails and stuff like that, and all, some other social media names. I don't know, but like the younger high school kids, they get they know social media stuff that I never heard of, you know. And, but um, I think. Um, like everything that um, uh, Vermont, what's the name of it? Yeah, Vermont Public. Vermont Public <laughs> um, is trying, is doing well, is, was going to be doing as well, reaching this age group. Um, is this something that they would love to get involved with? Because you know what it does? It expands their horizon. You know, they get to reach more people. You feel like their age is that 14 to 25 age group, and they get to learn more, you know, find out what's good around the, that million people you serve, you know. Um, so I, you know, I would love to be able to you know, work with whoever to um, try to get some of those individuals involved. Because um, we do we work with the um, radio station at St. Michael's, or is it WWPV and 90.1, you know, at, at UVM. And, um, and they, they have, um, it's very interesting, you know, you can listen to 90.1 in UVM and you hear all kind of music. Like, like Mary, I never heard so many types of music and I'm like, doo -doo all kind of <laughs> cool music you know you know but they it's a lot of, well, my point is that they all have um, incredible uh, thinking about what what they like and what they see in this world and how they want to um, show it you know what I mean and, and so so um, what you're doing you know for my public is um, exactly what these individuals need to raise that raise up on you know and so I can help you with that um, I'm, I'm surprised that you don't have 14 to 25 year olds um, working in that in those areas. Of yeah, we, we need to do a better job. And you know what you're, what you're talking about, Bruce, and what I'm hearing is like young people. They want to be involved in making media. They're not passive consumers like I was when I was that age. Like just turn on the TV and watch. They want to be doing it. Yeah. Um, and 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 also it's really important that they're hearing stories from people like. Them. Right, no, that's, no doubt about it. You know, it's like we do this thing called the peer peer model. You know what I mean? Like, like I each one teach one, but they they all are teaching each other. You know what I'm saying? Based on like we send one to a seminar or something, they come back and teach, you know presenting what they learned. You know, you know, and each one might tell stories about what their ancestors, their parents, their grandmother, what they learned through their cultures. You know what I mean? Too. You know, and um, how wonderful is that to hear some somebody, somebody saying talking to me from who was born and raised in Ireland or something, you know, or, and, um, and then, you know, and I can compare it to what I've learned from my ancestors when my parents taught me some you know, people from Africa, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's a very interesting and things that you never, you know, knew, and, you know, as you know, it rains all the time, you know, I always loved the, 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 uh, the green meadows, you know what I mean, when I say on TV, I've never been there. But, um, so there's a lot of things you learn, you know, about it, you know, um, some of my friends tell me about the, um, you know, the places, you know, the hangout places, you know, that he's been there. And um, it just things that these conversations need to be learned. And so I think what happens is, and I know this for a fact, if when you do this type of things, that um, it, solves, it, it creates harmony, a harmony in the world, a harmony in the community, a harmony in the school, the church, everywhere you go. You know, people you know, more or less, you know, liking each other or whatever, you know. And, uh, and it and it's stops a lot of the high risk. Because that's what we do. We help them with their goals, dreams, and aspirations, you know, while creating a um, safe place to be at. Mm -hmm. And um, because we do that, we know for a fact that somebody's hanging out in our art gallery, guess what? They're not, they're not, they're not drinking, they're not drugging, they're not you know, having unprotected sex, none of that stuff. But if they're not hanging with us or some other wonderful other person, what are they going to be at? They can be in the woods, the barn, having drinking and drugging, having you know, all kinds of high risk stuff. And so that's what we need to do to help, help the world get these youth, everybody involved with their ideas and suggestions, learn from their cultures, learn, learn from the, whatever they, whoever they are, you know what I mean? Like, you know, poetry or open mic or rap or rock, you know, whatever. We need to do, I, we do that, we try to do it as much as we can, but um, everybody needs to, you know, but nobody, but everybody needs to do that. I know because of the measurement of our organizations, we have over 50 awards, is that I see 
and I hear from the youth, you know what I mean? And it's a, and I must just, I don't, basically, they run our stuff, you know what I mean? And so our programs and events. And so for me, I see um, and learn what, you know, how they re and have to interact with each other. And it's a work, I have to sit back and it's a wonderful thing. Well, it sounds similar, this strategy that you have of hiring, um, what did you call them, engagement? Engagement producers, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, you know, trying to actually get the population you want to reach. Are you having any, any success getting younger producers of content that way? Yeah, actually we we have, uh, so Myra is a good example, but also we have a young man named uh, Myron who's our first uh, uh, Vermont Public News Fellow. And so we, we had a problem in that um, we were hiring journalists who all, all the, they all had to have three years experience in like public radio mm -hmm. or public television before we'd even look at them. And that walls off people that have lots of great right. ability. That's why I'm shaking my head like this, like when you said that. Right? And so we're trying to change how we hire people. And one of the ways we did that is say, we're going to create a position that is for someone who's fresh out of school, who you know has the ability to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. And um, Myron's been great, actually, and, and helped us to like, he tells stories that are funny, uh, and informative um, and finding stories that we wouldn't have found otherwise yeah so we, we got to do more of that I, we're start I, th I think it's like a path we're on and once we realize like to reach our goal and by the way our new goal is to basically engage with and really increase our engagement with people that are under the age of 45 while also not losing our existing audience yeah so we're trying to hold on to what we have but also do a lot better with younger folks um, to do that, we have to have more people on staff that, that understand that community and can relate and can help us tell that story. It's similar to challenges in local government and who we're reaching, right? It's traditionally been a certain subset. And if we continue to be that subset, we're not going to reach anyone broader. Um, yeah, well, I'm curious, like, you know, from both of your perspectives, what is the challenge that Vermont has in welcoming more diverse people well, then people aren't diverse, excuse me, more people of color, more people who come from different backgrounds. New Americans. New Americans. Like, uh, my daughter, I'm white, obviously, and my daughter is white, and we want to live in a place, and we have lived in places before in our history, that have more people of color, more, you know, Winooski being a big exception to that in yeah. Vermont. You know, what can we be doing as Vermont public to make everybody feel welcome? We've, I think, mostly been focusing on and obviously in Winooski, we still have a lot of work to do as well. But internally, trying to change the makeup of our staff, do more local recruiting, looking at processes like you were mentioning that create barriers to um, you know, existing talent. Um, we are trying to be more connected with the local organizations and the school districts, um, showing up in classes there to actually talk to youth and you know, do that relationship building so we start to understand and trust each other. Um, and then I think the third thing that we've been looking at is the structures that we work within. So the majority of our engagement is through like public meetings. It's an evening, come to this location, we're advertising in certain spaces. And so trying to be more flexible with when and where and how we make local government available. Um, I, I wouldn't say that we have found like a, a successful model yet, but I think trying many things is getting us closer to that point. Yeah, so <clears throat> you have like over 100 employees, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and, and you might not know right offhand, but on the diversity of your employees, you know, me around in Montreal too, where's your, where's your demographics? Yeah. Where's yeah. your, 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 your staff? Uh, where are they? I actually, I actually do have some numbers. Um, so that 100 makes it easy because you can kind of see percentages and things. Um, out of our 100 staff, um, we have about 10 that identify as BIPOC, um, which is not matching the Vermont stat even. Uh, so the Vermont statistic, I think, is more like 12 to 13 percent after the last census. So we're still behind there, but we've made progress. Two years ago, that number was much, much lower. Mm -hmm. So I think over time we're catching up there. But the other piece, Bruce, that we're lacking is diversity in leadership. We have w only one of our managers and no members of our leadership team are people of color, and that's, that's not sufficient. And then other types of diversity, we could, uh, we have one employee in Montreal, even though we have a big audience there, we could do a lot better on that. Uh, you know, we, we even could do a better job, and this is hard to talk about in the current environment, but 
uh, you know, political and ideological diversity and making mm -hmm. sure that we have a staff that represents all Vermonters there. Um, and then people with disabilities. I have a son that has severe autism and well, I would like to do a lot more to make sure that people with disabilities are part of our team too. It's a long way to go. I, I think um, <clears throat> like the age group of 14 and 25 is one, of your, is, is, a, is one of the largest audience in this whole entire world. You know, and for not to have that any part of what you, you know, what you're doing, to me, I only, I, it's, it's surprising that, that you made it in, in um, at these numbers and, and success as you have. I know for a fact when I look at your shows, whatever, and I see interviews, um, it's a lot of people my age or, you know, a little like younger than me, and all the time, all the time. All, and so, so that's all right, you know what I'm saying? No problem, that's what probably kept you to where your levels. Um, but I think if you, like what you're gonna do, you know, cause, I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. Bring in 14 to 25 year olds. Um, then you'll get a lot of, like, you'll get, like, um, like you know, you need to get, like, the, the street hard rappers, and, and you need to get those people who, who might not have a, a PhD, and individuals who just have inspired to do media work. And, um, and we know, we, we, we'll, we, if we don't know, we'll find them, you know what I'm saying? And um, hear what their ideas are. Do a survey, find out what their goals, dreams, aspirations are working in um, media, working with, um, Based on your mission goals and objectives. Now you said you changed some things between that. Um, so did you change your mission statement to your mission? Yeah, mission and vision. So our our vision is a Vermont that is in, engaged, inspired uh, to build our future together. And our mission is uh, to we want to broaden and diversify our audience and, and, and through stories that bring people together. Now that's really important. Actually, we're talking about stories here a lot. Stories are powerful tools, and they're not always powerful for the good. Stories can be powerful for the bad. It's just all dependent on how they're used. And unfortunately, I mean, there are all sorts of benefits of social media, but there, as you all know, it's in general, it rewards a lot of bad things. <laughs> Anger, things that get like strong Emotional negative triggers. emotions. Uh, and so what we want to try to figure out in public media Look, we were created 50 years ago because TV wasn't doing enough to serve the public. It was basically a lot of the same things you say about social media. Overall, it was shallow and, and it wasn't helping people develop themselves. It wasn't community-based, it was national. And so public media stepped in and said, wait, there's a space for nonprofits to do this. And then community media, what, what we're doing right now, that's another response to the market failure of commercial television, commercial radio. Now we have a market failure in social media. Commercial social media is not making us healthier. It's not strengthening our democracy. It does the opposite, Bruce, of what you're doing every single day in your program. And I feel like it's our job collectively to put good stories into the world, to do the sorts of stories that bring understanding and connection and not hate and division. Yeah. And so why, why are you bringing in people, um, why, why are you bringing in more people uh, bike parking um, PLC people color. Why are you bringing more people in, like who looks like me? Why are you Why are you doing it? Oh, uh, because we well practical reasons and also mission reasons. Like public media again going back 50 years, it was set up because commercial media wasn't serving certain people very well, including people of color, including low income folks, including folks that lived like I did in the middle of nowhere in Iowa. And when I was growing up in Iowa, we had exactly uh, two TV channels we could get on our antenna. That's how old I am, right? And one of them was public television. And thank God for that. I mean, I grew up on Sesame Street, and that's that was my like vision of the world. Is like I was imprinted on that. Um, and so that's still there's still a need for that even in today's world. Um, but sometimes public media has gotten away from that, and we. Uh, our audience tends to be older, as you said, and also tends to be people who have like college degrees or higher. That wasn't, it's a nice thing to serve that audience, but it's not what we were set up to do. And I'm glad you changed that. I'm glad you changed that. You know. um, um, but, you know, I think, um, you know, for 50 years, and I, I get it, you know what I mean? I, I kind of get it, you know what I mean? Because being a person of one of those um, people of color, um, 
it's, it's just that, um, you know, it wasn't inclusive, you know what I mean, right? I mean, it didn't start off inclusive because, first of all, probably a person like me wasn't in sitting down there to make, helping you make decisions, help make you build your mission goals and objectives. And, and so, so, and then, so, um, and I think that, I think that now today, like with the issues with the, um, we the issues with like Black Lives Matter and all the different issues with the police and, and people of color around the country, that a lot of people in the organization started to think like, we should include some people of color or BIPOC, you know what I mean, we should do that. I mean, so, you know, so, you know, to me, I don't think the back room is going to ever go away. Because I say get rid of the back rooms, don't, don't bring me in the back room with you. But I'm always, I'm usually one of the ones that's in the back room because of the way I work, how I work with them. I don't like it, really. I like it, but I, that's why I sit on some of these boards because I want to help make people like me get what they deserve. Um, but is the back room ever going to go away? Are people of color ever going to be a, really a, be a part of, is they going to be the CEO, president? Can they step in as you retire, be your, your position? And, um, you know, based on the things that they've done, how they make, um, programming or bring, bring people who like me in there because I'm a little concerned about that you know we're well, not just you know um, for, uh, for my public but <laughs> hey see you later <laughs> this is a real place <laughs> it's a real place you know, for, for my public you know I just want to make sure that this is for real you know what I mean like you know like you know one of your staff one of your senior staff coming in and you guys make decisions without talking to somebody who looks like me who's who probably who might be they think the issue, you know, and so that's very important, man. That we can't, we have to get rid of the back. We don't need no damn back. What we need, I'm not saying for my part. I'm well, saying you know, too. this is this is the front room, right? Right. right. Th this show is part of that. Right. Um, I, I, you're exactly right, yeah. and your analysis of what's happened in the past is exactly right. I mean, I think that what we're, we're what we want to do is open up the process of talking about how we're gonna serve the public so that we're not just making these decisions ourselves, but we're saying we would like to go in this direction. We, we have certain resources that we can uh, use, and, and then how do you think? So that's a question right. like, you know, I'd like to bring to you, not just today, but in the future. Sure. When we talk about like engaging with the young people you engage with and people like them, that's you shaping the programming. That's you helping us figure out sure. what we're supposed to do next. Sure. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, like when I have a youth advisory boards and stuff, and I don't make no decisions when I ask them because I serve them, they don't serve me, you know, first of all. And so, I, and I always get great answers, you know, as same, you know, and I always get great answers and I stand by them with conviction, you know, because like if you tell me you bought some youth for agenda item or something, I'm standing by, I don't care what nobody else say, you know what I mean? I, that youth said this, because I know for a fact that all the youth we work with, like, that we work with like um, youth in all different high schools or whatever, they all all the same. They might not. They might be different. They're, they're different demographics. Uh, might some of them in high risk environments, economically challenged. But you know what? You ask those you, well, what's the color? What's pink? What's 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 the music? Da, da, da. You know what I mean? What's the, you know? They all know the same stuff. They just they're in different you know places in, in the world. And so that's why their voices have to be heard. You know what I mean, especially if they live in different um, ec um, demographics you know I and mean? the economic status is different because we need to hear all these stories from. From our kids in Minuski to the, from my common kids and in South whatever we need to hear their stories, you know, about what the um, and they learn from each other too. That's the big thing. Like, what how can they do some of the things that they're doing, and they can do some things that they're doing, you know? And then um, how, what happens? They grow on it and, and, and actually um, live, learn, live better, you know, live better. Because cause learning is the best. Well, I feel compelled to share that at the Winooski High School, <laughs> I've actually participated in interviews with students there. They have, um, they have some equipment and some programming for that, and I know there's a lot of interest in sort of media production and videography and things. Um, so I think it's exciting that you are considering that voice um, and that there's opportunities to actually plug in you know, the desire is there. They want to learn these skills. Well, I hear you saying, Bruce, and I'm really inspired by your example of this youth advisory board. Um, you know, what we have in Vermont Public right now is we have a uh, we have a board of directors, and then we have a community advisory board. And the community advisory board, I'm really happy to say, I think it does represent all of Vermont pretty well, um, and it has people from all sorts of different backgrounds, beliefs, parts of the state. Uh, different races and and they advise our programming in general but there there's no one on that board that is 
the, the age range of that board is 18 to like 80, but not under 18. Yeah. So if we really want to do youth programming, maybe having a youth advisory board is the way to go. You want some real good answers about youth, you know what I mean? You gotta get it from them. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like my degree in psychology, and, and I don't give answers for the, you know, like for a doctor, lawyer, Indian chief answer. I know them all. <laughs> and if I need an Indian chief answer, I just go to a, the couple I know and get the answer. So that's and that's the same same thing. You're gonna get the best answers. You, you stand by, you get convicted for it because the youth are not gonna tell you. They're gonna tell you what it is. They're gonna tell you what they do. You know, with the social media, they work on the with all the things they you know they're doing with the art, and music. You know, they, they, it's, it's a basic. It's, gen, it's just elementary to them. It's to tell about their own life, their goals and their dreams and aspirations. And just like, so, but you gotta get those answers from them right out their mouth. Well, you, so you, it sounds like there's two benefits, right? It's like you get answers. In other words, you understand what they need. But also, they're they're developing. Right, they're learning skills, they're learning how to speak and be heard and leadership, right? Yeah. There's a side benefit to that too. Yeah, and then plus two, like I was uh, telling our Honor Romero here, is that um <clears throat> that these youth who um um experience what you know what the mayor's office do and what you do and what we do, we help them. We help them get scholarships and college job applications. You sign your name, you know, CEO, president of, you know, Vermont Public. You know what, you know, and the mayor signed her name on stuff. We just got some stuff to write another board. I said, on the mayor sign up and, and we went on the city council to do some things about a youth program foundation we were working with. But um, I'm telling you, we that's what we want to do. We want to inspire them and then make sure they get where they want to go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and it's easy to do because most people just want to learn, hear from somebody. Bruce, what you think about this person? You know, oh, it's good. Okay, that's all I want to hear. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't, they don't want to have to go through all this stuff. You know what I mean? They, do, they don't have to go through all the due diligence and whatever. They just want to, if they hear from some like honorable mayor, they hear from to say this is good. That's it. You don't go. That's it. So that's what I'm trying to say. So we put get youth and individuals into places where they want to go, and that's what we just got to do. Keep the low, keep things wonderful. Keep the low risk low. You know what I'm saying? We don't want anybody going to high risk. Anything. Just keep it all low, help them with their goals, dreams, and aspirations, and there you have it. A wonderful world. We'll make it, we'll keep it working. You know why? Because those individuals who go through um, to what they're going through and um, how we help them, they're going to tell their peers. Yeah. And they're going to tell them their peers, in theory, you know, that's going to just think it like them now. And guess what? They're not going to be in the back rooms or doing stuff. They want to say, wow, they helped them to go through this. But yeah, this, I want to get involved in that, right? Don't they? Why not? You know, it costs you nothing. Hmm. Why not? You know, some uh, CEO or mayor, you know, helping us do this. <laughs> it's a big deal. It really is. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I, I'm one first of my family to go to college, and I remember like, everything about that system scared me. And there were several points in it where I felt like I wasn't going to make it, and I didn't understand I was supposed to do certain things at certain mm -hmm. times. And there were always people there to help figure things out and demystify these systems and open doors and if you're working with young people that's your job right that's what you do every day demystify these systems help people figure out where there's opportunity for them you know knock down barriers that get in people's yeah. way and I think that's the challenge in, in local government and in all of these areas where we're trying to create more equitable access that the system has been created not everyone has been included in how it works and we have to break break that barrier and demystify it. Yeah, and part of it too, the other thing we're talking about is, um, does every job need uh, a college degree? Of course yeah. not. Well, when did we build that barrier? But we have, mm -hmm. you know? So having that conversation yeah. too. Yeah, so so at this time, you know, we're gonna say a couple last things. But um, I was I was saying to the mayor that um, like all these equity directions around the world now, you know, because of Black Lives Matter and police type of um, issues with, you know, people of color, and now, so, um, um, and everybody hired an equity director or whatever, you know. And I'm saying, you, you can't, you, I don't know nobody who had, it was, I never saw any, anybody had a major in equity in the university, in the college, you know. No, I don't know nobody who have a PhD in it. And so, so you really, the person, you, a person, you can hire a person to, who, um, the best person probably me to hire somebody who don't have no degree in college, but maybe have a bachelor's or something. Because because when you're in college, it helps build structure. But that that's that's the main thing you get from college. I mean, anyway. but um, I, I think the the person everybody should hire is a person who have life experience, 
You know, I can tell you, I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm, and I'm going to close it. Um, um, I can say this to you that, you know, I can tell you about some racial incidents or some, some stereotypical things in my life happen. And you understand, you know, you, you know, you, you know me, and so you understand how I feel, right? You, you can, I mean, you could, you could feel it, but guess what? You don't feel it. You won't, if I tell another black person like that, you, they feel it right from their heart. Yeah. You know, they get it, you know? So, well, this, this is, we're about to close from here, so you want to have any more last questions? Oh, I did see that you have some teaching in your background and was just curious how you've applied that in the role. Oh, yeah, I was a sixth grade English and social studies teacher um, for a while. And, oh, that's a good question. You know, uh, a good teacher is a good storyteller. A good storyteller is a good teacher, <laughs> yeah. right? Right. And so uh, I think that's the connection there. And actually, it's funny. I was a teacher, I was a journalist, and I run a public media station where education and journalism are both really important. Yeah, there's so, definitely some cross-section there. Yeah, exactly. It's great to have a diverse background of experiences as well. Um, speaking to Bruce's point, when you bring someone into a role, that they, they have a lot of experience. Yeah, and I think it's really important, speaking to what you just said there, and by the way, thank you for sharing that, oh, right? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, you're right. It's like you can empathize, but can you really understand? And that's why we need to all be a place where you can tell your story and try to cross that barrier between people that have that lived experience and people that don't. Because, you know, that, that, that is the antidote to the problems we're having today. Understanding, people feeling comfortable telling what they're saying, their story, and other people being willing to listen, to hear. To hear. And that's, uh, we have a long way to go to make sure people are willing to hear. Thank you for sharing with us about Vermont Public's mission and, and what we can look forward to in the future. It's been great to be on the show. Thank you, Bruce, for having me. Thank you me. very much. And Mayor, thank, thank you for you talking. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Co-hosting. And so thank you for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont Show. We'll see you next time.